So you know why we're taking these last couple days and talking about imaginary numbers, don't you? Well, that's right, because they will become solutions. They ultimately will be the solutions to certain quadratic equations. So what are we going to do? Well, the good news is not a whole lot differently. We're not going to do anything a whole lot differently just because the solutions come out imaginary. Honestly, the only thing that's going to really happen here is that we're going to look for a negative under the square root. And then we're just going to pull that negative out because we know that when there's a negative under a square root, well, that's an imaginary number. And again, we'll just pull that out and we'll call it I. That's all. The truth is this is actually just a little more practice with solving quadratic equations. Now, never a bad time to practice solving a quadratic equation because there's so many different ways to do it. Yes, there are different ways to solve quadratic equations. One reason that sometimes gets a little tricky for kids, but we're in Alge 2. We're trying to learn some of these new methods. Well, we have learned them, but we're going to keep talking about them. So how about like a square root method? Listen, some quadratic equations, remember quadratic just means that there's an x squared, are simple enough that basically we can just take the square root of both sides. Basically, make sure that before you take the square root of both sides that you have isolated the x squared. Notice, by the way, that that's all we got here is an x squared. And yeah, if you just have an x squared and no other x's anywhere, we can use a basic square root method. Now, before we take the square root of both sides, we got to get rid of this nasty fraction. What's a nice way to get rid of a fraction? Multiply by the reciprocal. If you multiply both sides by the reciprocal, you get just x squared because, of course, the fraction cancels. Then we just got to figure out negative 18 times 3 halves. A little bit of math, and that equals negative 27. Now it's time to take the square root of both sides. Oh, look, look, I get the square root of a negative number. By the way, I also get plus or minus. That's pretty important, so make sure that you don't forget that it's plus or minus everything that's about to happen. But what's about to happen? Well, the only thing that's about to happen is we're going to kind of rethink of negative 27 as negative 1 times 27. And what's true about the square root of negative 1? That's right. It pops out as an I. What about the 27? Well, it just stays underneath there. But now it's a positive 27. So I got plus or minus I root 27. There's a little bonus to this problem. The bonus is that the square root of 27 can be simplified. Yeah, you can actually think of the square root of 27 as having uh, members having two numbers uh, sort of inside of it. Uh, that is 9 and 3. Now, the reason I use 9 is because that's a perfect square root type number. So I can actually pull that square root of 9. I can also pull that out. Now, whenever you take a number out, it always gets smaller because we're going to do the square root of 9. So that gives me 3. I still got my I. And by the way, there's a 3 right here that's still left under the square root. So what's my final answer? Well, now it looks like it's plus or minus 3I root 3. By the way, you could also write this as I 3 root 3. Both of them are fine. It's just nice to be able to see it written both ways. Oh, that problem had a little bit more than we first thought. But basically, we did just take the square root of both sides because there was a single x squared once we isolated it, of course. Are you going to just take the square root of both sides on this problem? No. No, you can't. No, not because this 10x needs to be added over here. That That's not why. But the reason is because I have a 10x. You see... I have more than just x squared. And when you have more than just x squared, you need a different quadratic method. May I suggest that we complete the square? Complete the what? Complete the square. This was that little snazzy method that we learned last chapter where we basically add in a special perfect number. Don't forget that if you add it in, you have to add it to the other side also. 
Let's try this. It's called completing the square. It's good practice. Now remember, you just have to think of half of this number squared. So half of this number is negative 5 squared is 25. That's the perfect number that I need to complete the square. Of course, I need to multiply that to the other side of the equation. Excuse me, add that to the other side of the equation. You got to keep the equation balanced. Now, when you complete the square, the whole reason you're doing it is so you can rewrite the problem in a perfect squared form. So basically, this 25 that I added in here, when rewritten in this form, is going to become the minus 5. So x minus 5, the quantity squared, just so we remember, x minus 5, the quantity squared, is equal to this entire x squared minus 10x plus 25. What's 74 plus 25? Oh, negative 49. Okay. Why did we do this? Well, quite honestly, so that we actually still could square root both sides. Wait, I can now take the square root of both sides? Well, yes, because I actually have just a single square here. And that single square is going to cancel perfectly, leaving me with just x minus 5. Now, over here, I took the square root. Don't forget, you always get plus or minus. The negative pops out as an i. That's nice, leaving me with just i the square root of 49. Wait, the square root of 49, I can write that as 7. Yep, I can actually do the square root of 49. And then when it comes time to finishing the solving of this equation, just add 5 to both sides, and you get 5 plus or minus 7i. Notice the way that I wrote that, by the way. I put the 5 first, and then the plus or minus 7i second. Completing the square... Oh, yeah, that's when you make the problem, you rewrite the problem so that you have a single square, which will cancel with a nice square root. But you say, do I have to complete the square? What if the problem's already completed for you? Then you want to take advantage of basically how we ended that last problem. I mean, look at this one. Do we have to complete the square? Well, it's already done. It's already done. So what should I do? Well, I guess you could take the square root. You see, some problems might not fit nicely underneath a certain heading. It might just be that we have to recognize, hey, I can take the square root of both sides. Right? That's going to cancel with that square. Leaves you with x plus 4. And here we have the square root of a negative number. Ah, that's no big deal. The square root of a negative number is going to always produce an i. And uh, it looks like I'm left with a root 10. You didn't forget the plus or minus, right? So is there something else I should do over here? Is there a perfect number inside of 10? No. So we can just leave it as the square root of 10. But this plus 4, this plus 4 still needs to be subtracted to the other side. Now that's a real number that real number is not going to somehow combine with the i root 10. In other words, I'm not going to get like 14 or something. But that's okay. I just get negative 4 plus or minus i root 10. It's called a complex number. It basically has a real part and an imaginary part. But that's what we're talking about. Solving equations that will produce imaginary or complex numbers. You knew it was coming, right? The quadratic formula. The quadratic formula, why does it get such a bad rap? It's actually pretty nice. It's able to handle any type of quadratic equation. You mean even a quadratic equation that has an imaginary solution? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Op X is equal to opposite of B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You didn't forget that quadratic formula already, did you? That's a big takeaway from this year, and we're going to use it again. So how does it simplify? Well, I'm pretty sure negative 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 1 times 5 is 20. So I get 4 minus 20. Now, 4 minus 20, uh-oh, that's negative 16. 
Uh, it's not really a big uh-oh. It's just the square root of a negative number. Now the negative sign comes out as an i, and the square root of 16 can now be simplified. The square root of 16 can be simplified to be 4. Careful, I've seen kids like just write 16, but I want to do the square root of 16. 2 plus 4i over 2. Wait, should I do like a heart method here? Should I simplify this? Oh well, yeah, because every one of these numbers can be, uh, well, reduced or divided with the number 2, right? So 2 divided by 2. If you want to kind of show it individually, 2 divided by 2 plus or minus 4i divided by 2. But that's just going to be 1 plus or minus 2i. And you most certainly can just skip down to that answer if you would like. What about factoring? Remember, that, that was definitely one of the strategies that we used in the uh, middle of this chapter. How come we haven't talked about that yet? Well, factoring only works when there's actual real numbers that will produce your uh, your trinomial. So can I use factoring? Well, yeah, you can always think about it. You know, two numbers that multiply to be 8 but add to be negative 6. Now, those numbers would be negative 4 and negative 2. But they're real numbers. Real, real. There's nothing imaginary about x equaling 4 and x equaling 2. Here's my point. If you can factor a problem, it's not going to end up with imaginary numbers. All right, so we just can't use factoring for an imaginary problem, but we still can use factoring. Uh, if it's going to work, why wouldn't you use it? You should. So how do you want to solve this one? This is kind of like your exit problem. Can you solve this any way you want it? Just like Journey used to sing, any way you want it, you can solve this problem. Now, I know when you're watching a video, it's not the same as being in class, but you should be trying to solve this. You know that I am going to show you how to solve it soon. But you really should pause the video and you should be thinking, okay, could I do this problem using one of the strategies that was shown on the previous slides? Okay, the answer I hope is yes. One of the ways could be to complete the square. For some reason, uh, students uh, shy away from this, but it's actually pretty snazzy. Now, the one thing about this method is you need to scoot the 40 over here to the other side by subtracting it over. Um, yeah, I, I just want to have a space right here for a new number. So I need to move that 40 over. But then there's going to be some numbers that get added in here. And quite honestly, it's just going to be half of this number squared. Now, half of this number is 5, and when it's squared, it's 25. So that means I'm going to just add 25 to both sides. When I add 25 to both sides, I'm able to rewrite this problem as a perfect square. By the way, negative 35 and 25 is negative 10, but in here is where I put my plus 5. That was that half number. Listen, if you can complete the square, you're basically a square root away from your final answer. Take the square root of both sides, get plus or minus i root 10, and then this 5 right here, just subtract it. It needs to get moved out of, out of the way, but it's just going to end up being your negative 5 in front of your plus or minus i root 10. So that was pretty cool. We completed the square. There's another way though, right? You could have used the quadratic formula. Yeah, the quadratic formula uh, is pretty fail-safe just with one uh, sort of observation. Make sure that your equation was equal to zero. Uh oh, your equation got equal zero. That means that you actually wanted to move the uh, five, you wanted to move the five over to this side by subtracting it to be 35, which now gives us zero. 
which now gives me uh, an equation that's ready for the quadratic formula. So, ready? Opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4ac. Ten squared is a hundred. Four times one times thirty-five. Uh, four times one times thirty-five. Um, what's that? A hundred fifty. And uh, that actually means the square root of negative fifty. Of course, with the other values, negative ten plus or minus. Square root of negative 50 over 2. Square root of negative 50, we got to do a little bit of work on that. Um, you know, there is a big perfect number inside of 50. It's the number 25. Uh, the, the negative comes out as an I. We can kind of deal with that right away. But when you bring that 25 out, it's going to become a 5, right? When you bring the 25 out, it simplifies down to be a 5. It leaves behind the 2, and we end up with um, negative 10 plus or minus i5 root 2 over 2. Something seems a little fishy here. What? Did I do some bad math? Negative 10 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. What am I missing here? Oh, darn it. It's not 150, it's 140. Ah. All right. So that's going to become the square root of 40. Okay. Now the square root of 40, does that have a perfect number inside of it? Yes, it does. It has the perfect number of 4. So we want to think of this as 4 times 10. All right. So 4 is the number that's going to come to the outside as a 2. It's going to leave behind a root 10. All right. So the square root of negative 40 is I2 root 10. Now, the 2 in the bottom here, it does uh, reduce, divide, cancel with the two numbers that you see. It does not also divide with the 10, because that's not a 10. It's the square root of 10. So that gives us negative 5 with the 10 and the 2. And then uh, with these 2's canceling, it just is the same as the number 1. So we get negative 5 plus or minus i root 10. Hey, that's the same answer that we got up here. It just took a little more work, especially if you don't know how to multiply like the teacher. 4 times 1 times 35 is 140. Okay, so that's solving quadratic equations with imaginary numbers. Remember, basically you just get a negative under the square root and you pull it out as an I and uh, you're on your way to having your imaginary answers. The homework is uh, in digital form. Uh, you should be able to access that homework sheet on the calendar.